What's going on, folks? It's Moji, the king of the north. It's Moji, me, baby. And I'm here to give you everything I know about the War of the Five Kings 2.0. Yes, folks, the possibilities are endless. What would have happened if Rob Stark ended up winning the War of the Five Kings? What would the landscape look like right now in Westeros? Would the Iron Throne hold a new king or queen? This is what it's all about. It's Mojini. Now, first off, you guys know Rob Stark is one of my favorite characters in A Song of Ice and Fire. The dude had no POV. He only lasted a couple books on the show a couple seasons and he was gone. Yet, he left indelible mark on the show and on other characters. He was Jon Snow's older brother, so Jon Snow had fond memories going up in Winterfell with him that shaped him into the man that he is today. You gotta credit Rob for some of that of what, Rob, what Jon has turned into. Okay, he was the heir to Winterfell, the presumed heir, the man that Eddard Stark, another favorite character, groomed to be the Lord of Winterfell. A lot of things happened. Once Rob died at the Red Wedding. Spoilers. But this is what it is. I'm going to try to give you everything I know and everything I can about one of my guys. Rob Stark himself. First and foremost, number five. House Lannister would be extinct. Yes, folks, that's what it is. House Lannister would not exist. That means Cersei, Tyrion... Tywin would have died way earlier than he did because he was the battle commander. So that means he would have died in the field, captured or greased up. That's what would have happened. All right. Once Rob Stark would have won the whole War of the Five Kings, he would have went to King's Landing, made everybody pledge fealty, bend the knee, and he would have executed the losers. He would have executed the losers, just like they executed his father, Eddard Stark for supposedly being a traitor, which he wasn't, he would have returned the favor and hung Cersei, Jaime Lannister, the whole nine yards. Jaime wouldn't have even been used as a hostage exchange for Sansa and Arya back in King's Landing. They would have all died. It's known that in history, the winners usually write the history books, folks. House Lannister would have ended up like the reigns of Castamere. A little bit of irony. Rob would have definitely beheaded every single one of them and put their heads on spikes in King's Landing. Ooh -wee. Next up, number four. Stannis would rule in King's Landing. Now remember, Rob Stark was king of the north, but he had no intentions of being king of the realm. He did not want the Iron Throne. He specifically told his cousin when he was sending peace terms to Cersei and King's Landing that the north would be an independent land, not subjugated by the crown and King's Landing. So what does that mean? There's only one person that would have been crowned king at that point. That would have been Stannis. The funny thing is, Stannis said that Rob Stark was stealing half of his realm and he wouldn't have liked that. But I'm pretty sure had Rob Stark defeated the Lannisters, they would have came to terms because Rob didn't want the crown even though he could have took the crown for himself. So that leaves Stannis at King's Landing because when Stannis did his thing at the Battle of Blackwater, there wouldn't have been Tyrion to save the day because Tyrion would have already been killed. He would have died in the War of the Five Kings. And that now brings me to my third point. The sacking of King's Landing. Yes, folks, the sacking of King's Landing would have happened. As I said, Tyrion wouldn't have been there to save the day. The wildfire, the magical tricks, 
everything that the half man, half man, half man did against Stannis wouldn't have existed. It wouldn't have happened because Tyrion would have fell in battle back in the Riverlands. Had he died, King's Landing would have been sacked. All the women and children would have been raped and pillaged. Yes, that's what it is, because Stannis was out for blood. Stannis was out to get what was rightfully his, the Iron Throne. So what would that have meant? That would have meant a lot of blood spilled. Yes, folks, King's Landing would have been hell on earth. There wouldn't have been wildfire. There wouldn't have been a spectacle, because Tyrion wouldn't have been there. To talk to the Alchemist Guild to get the wildfire ready. So basically, King's Landing would have been there for the right for the pickings. Cersei, in her silly smile, in Megor's hold fast, talking to Sansa, all that would have been the catalyst to Stannis coming in. And then you gotta remember, Tywin would have died in the Riverlands as well. So if Tywin died in the Riverlands and House Lannister is basically ex extinct at this point, meaning Jaime's already dead, Tyrion's already dead, and Tywin's dead, only Cersei's still around, and, and Tommen, Marcella, and Joffrey, of course, in King's Landing. But the point is, had Tywin already been dead, there would, have been Ty there would not have been Tywin to save the day in King's Landing. When Stannis would have came on shore took care of all the Crimson Guards and Lannister men still available. They would have killed all of them. And boom! Dunzo King's Landing. Bend the knee. It's over. House Tyrell. None of that would have happened. The Ghost of Renly. None of it, folks. All right, now, moving on to number two thing that would have happened if Rob would have won the War of the Five Kings is... Will be a couple little small things, you know what I mean? Like, you know, the Boltons taking over Winterfell. Obviously, that wouldn't have happened. You wouldn't have heard anything about the Boltons. And in all honesty, Bruce Bolton was on Rob's side from the get. But once he saw that Rob married the Talisa girl and broke his oath to marry a Frey that he was supposed to do for the soldiers to be given access to cross the twins, Roos Bolton saw an opportunity, and obviously a crow came, you know, obviously a raven came from Tywin Lannister telling him to join sides with the Lannisters and he'll be richly rewarded, he'd be named Warden in the North, Given Winterfell, if he betrayed Robb Stark, you know, Roos only did this because the opportunity arose. But if Rob would have done everything correctly and followed through with the plans to marry the Frey girl, wasn't an oath breaker in that regard, you know, all that, obviously, the Boltons would have never betrayed them and everything would have been gully in the north, all right? Nothing would have happened regarding the Bolton. So that has to play out as is. Obviously, a couple of other minor things like the Greyjoys, you know, raiding and reaving the North. That would have been cleaned up. I'm pretty sure that Balon Greyjoy would have been put to the sword. If Theon would have kept on doing what he was and sided with his family, Theon would have been put to the sword. So... Those are little minor things that would have happened as well. But the number one main thing is the Boltons would have never betrayed Rob Stark. You have to include that. They would have never turned cloaked on him had Rob kept on to his task and won the War of the Five Kings the way it was. Basically, the dominoes started falling when Rob broke his oath. After that, that's when everything turned and the Boltons turned on them. All right, all right, all right. We are down to the main fact, ladies and gentlemen. The number one thing that would have happened if Rob Stark would have ended up winning the War of the Five Kings is... Of course, the Red Wedding would have never happened. 
Oh, now how traumatizing was this? Oh, man. This is one of the best scenes done on television history. I mean, my God, all the signs were there for you. You know, you feel so dumb that you didn't see it coming. And this is credit to D&D and how they done this show. This is one of the things that they got perfectly correct. And when I was reading the books... When, the way it happened on the show is exactly how it happened to me while reading the books. It was a shock. It was just a bow right in your face. I mean, all of a sudden you're reading about what's going on in the wedding, how everybody's drinking and having fun and laughing, and then all of a sudden, boom! You just hear the reins of Castamere playing, and boom! Rob gets an arrow in his chest. Talisa girl gets stabbed in her freaking Baby bump, oh man, the brutality, the horrors, oh man. And in the books, the same thing, you're just reading and everything's cool and dandy. You think Rob's about to do his thing, you feel so optimistic. He won the, 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 the battle at the Whispering Woods, he captured Jamie Lannister. Everything is there for the taking. He's got a new baby on the way. Oh, man. It just looked so good. And then you just you just hit with a gut punch that just crumbles your world. And you just, oh. You know, and, and, and this is a moment in the story and in the show where you decide whether you want to keep watching this show, keep reading the books, or whether you're done with it. You had already gone through the horror of losing Eddard Stark. You know, you, you went through that and you, and you still barreled through and you said, okay, it's cool. He was, he, he, he was the main character and they just took him away from me. It's okay. I like the way this story's going. I'm going to ride with it. And then boom, they take away his son. And his son had so much promise, the young wolf. Wolfie, oh, and Greywin yelping like a little doggy with the arrow shooting him. Oh, and the brutality, and you're like all the future and everything you had riding on Rob Stark defeating the Lannisters just got ripped away from you, ripped in and, and shredded up into a million pieces right in front of your eyes. You know, and that's where you just decide that if this show is for you or if it isn't. And, you know, you just think back to season one when they find the dire wolves in the snow and everything is carefree and Robert visits Winterfell. And you just can't believe this family has been ripped apart right before your eyes. This family that you've followed all along with and you've invested You've put all your eggs in a basket with this family, and, and, and GRRM just kept stealing them from you. You know, it, it, it was when I realized that this show was the greatest show on television. It's the greatest book series I've ever read, and I'm sure all of you agree with me. I mean, it was just, you know, amazing. And I don't think anything will ever be replicated on, on television like The Red Wedding again. And yeah, man, I mean, you could just see the passion I'm trying to bring forth to you. Had Rob won the War of the Five Kings, obviously the, the events that led to the Red Wedding would have never happened because Rob would have obviously married, the, had he married the Frey, Frey girl and stayed to course and not done the, the unhonorable thing and married the girl that he got pregnant and fell in love with and instead stuck to his word. He took the Frey soldiers and got to cross the twins their bridge if he married a Frey girl and he took some of their uh, ch children to be his squires and he didn't follow through with it and everything just crumbled from there. He was advised to kill Jamie Lannister to send a message to the Lannisters. They killed Eddard Stark. So eye for an eye, he should have killed Jamie Lannister right then and there. Not even tried to ransom him and tell the Lannisters he meant business. You know, a lot of things went sour you know, in the Riverlands for Rob, but had he won and, and done some ruthless things, in my opinion, like killing Jaime Lannister early on in the story, I think he would have won the War of the Five Kings and he would have crippled the Lannister forces by getting rid of a battle commander that they needed and, you know, fulfilled his vows.
the Red Wedding would have never happened. So guys, that's all I have for you. If there's anything that I missed, which I probably did, I'm not gonna admit it, but I probably missed a little bits and pieces here and there. But if there's anything I missed on what would have happened if Rob would have won the War of the Five Kings, please put it down in the comments section. And please like this video. Please subscribe if you're a new visitor and please share. You know, this is what we do. And you know, it doesn't cost you anything. So please like, please share. You know, it's the King of the North, and I'm out. I hope you enjoyed my little spiel. Mojini, Mojini, Mo, Mo, Mojini. <laughs>